Good afternoon. My name is Keith Tebow. I'm from Bristol Community College, and I want to thank you for joining us for our live chat here on our Bristol Community College Facebook. Now, it's an understatement to say that the COVID-19 pandemic has changed what has been our normal. And we know that you have a lot of questions. So let me start this live broadcast today by letting you know what we know. First of all, summer classes that are starting very soon, all will be happening online. We're still working on a plan on what our fall 2020 semester will look like. And we hope to have some information on that for you in early June. And finally, as many of you may know, our commencement ceremonies have been postponed. But in the coming weeks, we will recognize the achievements of our graduates with an eye toward an in-person celebration sometime at a later date. So thank you for that brief update. And uh, please continue to check out our website for more information as these things change. Our staff continues to provide quality services as students and their families decide what will be next in their educational journey. Now, when students complete their time with us, many will migrate right into the workforce while others will move on to continue their studies at another institution, working on a bachelor's degree or more. It's that transfer element that we're gonna focus our live broadcast on today. All our transfer students have earned a high quality, respected education at a substantial savings, in some cases, thousands of dollars, compared to starting out at a four-year school. Now, what many people may not know is that even if you're currently enrolled in a four-year institution, you can take classes at Bristol that can be transferred to your current college institution and get credit for that class. With COVID-19, many students and their parents, especially those incoming and rising freshmen, will wonder whether they should start in September. Some are even contemplating taking a year off, what we call a gap year. Now, taking a gap year is not recommended. Many who delay starting college often never start at all. There's no reason to put your education on hold. And Bristol may be an option for you if you're uncertain or are facing a change in your financial situation as a result of the pandemic. So what I'd like to do right now is bring in our experts who will be leading our discussion today. Joining us this afternoon are Stephanie Dupre. She is from our Transfer Services Office, as well as two representatives from our Financial Aid Office, Elena Pacheco and Paige Jones. Ladies, thank you for joining me today. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, we want to make this interactive, so we want you to contribute your questions to us. We will weave them in throughout the course of our conversation today. So please add any questions you may have in our comments section. And again, we'll try to weave them in and get them answered as best we can. Stephanie, I want to start out with you uh, this afternoon. Um, you know, as we've discussed, a lot of students will come to Bristol and they transfer out to uh, another institution. How many students typically transfer from, from Bristol? So each year we have around a thousand students that will transfer from Bristol Community College to over 100 transfer institutions. Uh, some students will stay within the state school system, transfer to Bridgewater State University, UMass Dartmouth, UMass Lowell, uh, UMass Amherst, and other um, state colleges and UMass campuses. And then we also have several students that will transfer to private institutions uh, in Massachusetts and really across the country. So we'll have students that end up at Wentworth, URI, Rhode Island College, Bryant, um, Boston University, Becker, Providence College, Berkeley, and more. So obviously there's a, a, a lot of uh, options for students that you know, they can earn credit at Bristol and have those transfer on to their, to their four-year institutions. How does mm -hmm. the college decide what classes are transferable from Bristol to those four-year schools? Mm -hmm. So it's really up to the four-year institution to determine what they'll take for course equivalencies. Um, but we have several systems in place to help students and staff and faculty understand what these equivalencies are. So to start through the mass transfer program, 
the state of Massachusetts is um, really so far ahead of the game in transfer course and program equivalencies. All of the community colleges and the four-year state institutions have worked together for years to create an entire database of courses that are equivalent to each other, as well as associates to bachelor's degree programs that will guarantee transfer credit and also offer tuition cost savings based on a student's grade and um, the completion of their program mm -hmm. at the community college. So all of those resources can be found online at uh, masstransfer.edu. And in addition to that, Bristol Community College also has a course equivalency guide that we offer on our website. But we also have over 100 transfer articulation agreements with public and private institutions that outline the program a, court, uh, a student should be in in order to transfer their courses to uh, a private or a public institution. And um, some of these come with scholarship opportunities and other benefits such as waiving application fees or um, you know, a assisting the student through the application process. I know one of the, the, the big aspects of uh, transferring from Bristol to one of our state institutions is uh, and I talked about it in my my lead in is that you know students can save a substantial amount of money mm -hmm. and normally you know could be upwards of thousands of dollars over the course yes. of their time at Bristol when they move forward mm -hmm. um you know when when you're working these these agreements and students when they start here at Bristol do they have to decide whether they transfer at the start or can they be even a year into their studies decide that you know I do want to continue and and and, and pick a school sort of mm -hmm. not from the beginning, but sort of midway? Mm -hmm. So um, in transfer services, sometimes we'll see students in their first semester, and then sometimes we'll see students in their final semester. And really either way, um, we're here to work with you to help you find your options. So if a student is sure of where they would like to transfer from the beginning, there are ways that we can get them on the right track. But if a student, you know, is one or two years into their program and they still need help um, through mass transfer or through the articulation agreements that are already determined, um, there are always options. I want to talk a little bit about some of the uh, two of the programs that you mentioned uh, early on. You talked about two programs, one with Bridgewater State University and one mm -hmm. with UMass Dartmouth. Mm -hmm. uh, one is BCC to BSU, which is with Bridgewater, and Bristol plus UMass, UM, uh, UMass D, which is the uh, agreement with uh, UMass Dartmouth. Mm -hmm. Are there special added uh, benefits by going through those specific programs for transfer students? Yes, absolutely. So um, Bristol has worked really hard with Bridgewater State University and UMass Dartmouth to create a very unique partnership with both institutions. What happens is if a student knows where they want to transfer um, from the beginning of their program, if they intend to go to Bridgewater or UMass Dartmouth, they can sign up for either program, BCC to BSU or Bristol plus UMass Dartmouth. When the student signs up for either program, they're signing an agreement that basically says Bristol can communicate their student information with the respective four-year institution. And what that means is the student will get advising services from the four-year school while they're a student at Bristol. The student will also receive a student ID at Bristol, but also at the four-year institution. And that allows the student to attend athletic events. They can use the four-year school's library, um, you know, any sort of academic event. It, it gives the student the chance to acclimate to the four-year environment while a Bristol student. And so when the student gets to the four-year school, 
they experience less of that transfer adjustment because they're they're already acclimated. Um, when it's time to actually transfer from Bristol to the four-year school, the student doesn't have to fill out an application. We send the transcript on the student's behalf. And um, you know, the, the biggest piece of this is that the student will get transfer advising from the four-year school. So it's really a great way for the students to become familiar with their transfer institution while being a student at Bristol. Hmm. I wanna get into now uh, one of the aspects um, I, I mentioned earlier again in setting up uh, our interview today. You know, there are a number of students that you know, maybe local in our in our region, in our service area, Bristol County, but they may mm -hmm. be going school to a school elsewhere. They may be at another four year institution that may be elsewhere in, in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts or mm -hmm. maybe even in another state. They mm -hmm. may be home over the summertime and they may be looking to get um, maybe a class or two under their belts to help them with their education at their four year school. Now, mm -hmm. Bristol is an opportunity for them, correct? To get maybe some classes in that may be able to transfer to some of their other other colleges and they can get credit for that. Yes, absolutely. So if, if you are a student that is matriculated at another institution, we always encourage you to speak with your advisor or your registrar's office to get permission to take a course at Bristol, just to make sure that the course will transfer in to your current institution as the equivalent course that you need. So that, in effect, would um, would would make the transition easier, right? If if Bristol is talking with that other institution, mm -hmm. you can sort of work together to make sure that whatever class that student is taking at Bristol will mm -hmm. be transferable to their other college. So that that's actually good to know. One final question before we get to financial aid, uh, Stephanie, okay. is what if there's a student that um, is attending another college and deciding that you know, that fit may not be for them and they want to attend Bristol full time. What is that transfer like? Mm -hmm. So um, depending on where you are studying, there might already be resources available online that you can check as far as course equivalency guides to see the courses that you've already taken and what they would look like as equivalencies at Bristol. Um, and if those aren't available, what you would want to do is is just apply to Bristol. There's a free application online that you can get started with. Request your transcripts to be sent to us, and then a transfer um, equivalency would be done in order to see what your credits would look like with us and um, and what it would look like to get started. All right, so Stephanie, I appreciate your time. Let's now move to the uh, financial side of things. Let's bring in Paige and Elena for the next part. Um, let me ask either one of you can, can answer uh, this question. In terms of starting out, if, um, if a student is coming in, and I want to focus on those students that may be at a, a four-year school that may be taking classes at Bristol, um, how does their financial aid work? They may have gotten a package at their four-year school. Are they able to access financial aid at all if they take classes at Bristol? And either one of you can answer this. Sure. Um, a majority of the time, they are able to still access financial aid. We just suggest that the student either, if they haven't already completed a FAFSA for that age year, so right now that would be the 1920 age year if they're looking into summer, uh, to do that so that we can look at what their eligibility is or if they've already completed it for their school, if they go back on and add Bristol's um, school code, which is 002176, then we can get the information forwarded over to us and have our counselors review it to see what we can get them for some um, financial assistance. Now, Paige, in, in terms of um, the, the financial aid process um, and, and students, um, I sort of want to get back to um, that example I, I, I gave with, with Stephanie of students that may be at a four-year school that, that may want to transfer fully to, to Bristol, um, if they already have aid packages, are they going to need to sort of reapply in some, some aspects or uh, just easily just add that, that FAFSA code, school code? Yes, yeah, so it's simple as just adding our school code. Um, like 
Elena said, 002176. And then once we receive the application, we'll be able to um, review the student's um, application and then we'll be able to see if we can package an award, if so, what they can get. It may not be exactly what a four year would give. Um, honestly, for us, it would be better. Uh, we are super affordable and for us, a class starts at 675. Um, for other schools, it can go anywhere from 1700 to 2300. So you definitely probably receive a better package. Uh, but first you have to start with the actual application. And in terms of applications in general, uh, we know that the application season for the for the next academic year actually starts like in October, correct, yes. of, 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 of the year. So if you're looking ahead to fall of 2021, you can actually start applying for financial aid um, in October of 2020. And, yeah. and the deadline, you know, the later you're in, um, the later that you apply, um, is it is it less of a chance you'll get some financial aid? I guess my question is, is there some benefit in general to apply for financial aid as early as possible? There is, yes. Um, obviously, for, for federal funding, um, you know, you're going to have your eligibility, but some of those state grants and there are some grants that were only given limited funding. So it's on a first come, first serve basis. So it does benefit the student to apply as early as possible so that if they fall under a category where they would qualify for a grant um, through the state uh, or otherwise that is limited funding, they have the accessibility to receive that. And I want to uh, spend some time um, as we go on here, and we're only going to be on for another couple of minutes. So if you have any questions for either Stephanie or our financial aid staff, please send them along in the comments of our Facebook Live uh, broadcast today. But I want to ask uh, uh, both uh, both of you, Elena and, and Paige, um, there's some other information that is coming out that is in, that includes financial aid uh, recently um, dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic that we want to provide a little bit more information on. One of them is the CARES Act. Many of you know mm -hmm. that Congress and the President signed the CARES Act, which allows for assistance for people who are unemployed and also for small businesses to help pay for their employees while they may be shuttered during the COVID-19 pandemic. There's also some money for colleges and universities. Bristol has received some money, half of which is going to be going directly to students. And I'll let either one of you uh, address how the college is planning on allocating that money, as, at least as what you know right now, to some of those students who may be eligible for some funding through the CARES Act. Absolutely. So the funds are going to be allocated through our um, student accounts department. And what's going to happen is students are going to be receiving emails um, here in the near future that will give them uh, the application process for the CARES Act funds. They would have to complete an application um, through the link that is provided to them. And this application would then walk them through the steps to determine their eligibility. Um, and then those funds are going to be distribu distributed to them through uh, Bank Mobile, who processes our refunds currently. And all of those instructions will be um, outlined in the email that students receive. So it does personalize it. It allows students to go through and kind of um, indicate where their hardships may lie. But then there are also just... Um, you know, basic questions that each student would have to answer as well that are um, indicative to if they qualify for the CARES Act funds. And the other question that may be on some students' minds is financial aid for the 2021 year, which starts in, in September. Uh, what's an update on, on how students and when students will start to hear some information about their financial aid award for the coming year? Paige, would you like to add to that? Yes. So we are actively um, going through the process of reviewing uh, to get ready to package for our 2021 application year. Um, it is a little later than usual. Historically, we would package sooner, but it, we're actively working on it. We are hopeful that we can get it out by the end of May, if not early, early June. So we are working hard to get their uh, awards for the students as soon as possible. All right, good information. And we have some questions that have come in since we've been uh, speaking. So I want to get to one right now. It relates to financial aid. I want to share uh, Laurie's question right now. Laurie asks, does financial aid package transfer to Bristol 
if I want to take a gap year, we talk about taking a year off. Mm -hmm. So will a financial aid package transfer from year to year, I guess, maybe her question? Well, for financial aid, it's um, we look at the eligibility on a year to year basis based off of the FAFSA application. So each year you do have to reapply um, and that's seeking out federal and state funding as well as um, loan eligibility. So if you take a gap year off, um, it's I mean, it's never guaranteed that you would get the same exact financial aid package each year because it's dependent on the FAFSA and um, you know, if you're if you submit too late, some of the funds that we run out of early on, um, first come first serve, might be affected. So, um, you know, taking a gap year doesn't necessarily affect your financially, but it won't guarantee that what you started with is what you're going to get when you come back. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I have a question now for for Stephanie that uh, just came in from from Jennifer. Jennifer is asking, and you may have touched upon this a little bit, are there any benefits for attending a state public university after attending Bristol Community College, like tuition discounts? I guess she's looking for some more information on that. Stephanie? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for your question. So um, through our mass transfer program in the state of Massachusetts, if a student completes their associate's degree with Bristol and earns a certain GPA, there are various benefits that a student can get. For example, um, guaranteed transfer of credits with a 2.0 or higher, no application fee with a 2.0 or higher, no application essay with a 2.0 or higher. Once a student has a 2.5 or higher, it, it could guarantee admission with space permitting in the major and the college. And then to get to your question, there is a mass transfer tuition credit for students that earn a 3.0 or higher if the student matriculates within one year of receiving their associate's degree and enrolls continuously um, and then continues achieving that 3.0 uh, throughout their program at the four-year school. So a lot of it depends on the institution, but again, since that question was, our public higher edu educational institutions in Massachusetts, a lot of the benefits are, are somewhat uniform, correct? Yes. Yep. So transferring from Bristol to any of the state colleges in Massachusetts or the UMass campuses, those are the benefits through mass transfer. All right. Well, I want to thank the uh, the three of you for, for joining us today. It's been a, a very informative session and hopefully give some people uh, the opportunity or the options that they may have before them. Uh, we all know that the COVID-19 pandemic has thrown a wrench into many plans and college is one of them. And we just want to let all of you know that Bristol is an option for you uh, if you're looking to, to get started right away. And as we said earlier, um, taking a gap year is, is not really recommended. Uh, many students who take that gap year, sometimes we'll never start their education. So we wanted to make sure that we talked about transfer and how that works at Bristol and at other institutions. So hopefully you got some information on that today. I wanna to thank uh, Stephanie, I wanna thank you, I wanna thank Elena, I wanna thank Paige uh, for uh, for joining us today and um, all the best and, and we'll talk soon. Thank you for joining me, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. As we wrap up, I want to give you some uh, added information. If you have some questions uh, directly in terms of transfer, we ask you that you visit our transfer webpage at bristolcc.edu slash transfer. And if you have some specific questions concerning financial aid, please visit our webpage, bristolcc.edu slash transfer financial aid. So I want to thank you for joining us today on this special live chat on Facebook Live. I'm Keith Tebow. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to see you again very soon.